Okay, so in order to determine if the engine is able to run under high temperature, we need to determine the changing length in pistons and the cylinders. So delta L1 here is the changing length in the brass pistons, which is equal to alpha 1 times L0 times delta T. Alpha 1 is the coefficient of linear expansion for the brass, since the piston is made up of the brass, and it's equal to 2 times 10 to the power negative 5 per degree Celsius. L0 is the initial length of, of the brass pistons, and delta T is the changing temperature in the brass pistons. And delta L2 here is the changing length in the steel uh, cylinders, which is equal to alpha 2 times L0 times delta T. And alpha 2 is the coefficient of linear expansion for the steel, and L0 is the initial length for the steel cylinder, and delta T is the changing temperature for the cylinders. And in this case, both pistons and the cylinders should have the same initial length and the changing temperature, which means that L0 and delta T here is constant. So therefore, the changing length of uh, each pistons and cylinders should be depending on the coefficient of linear, linear expansion of the material, okay? So we know alpha 1, which is the coefficient of linear expansion for the brass is equal to 2.0 times 10 to the power negative 5 per degree Celsius. And alpha 2 is the coefficient of linear expansion for the steel, which is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the power negative 5 per degree Celsius. And as you can tell, alpha 1 is greater than alpha 2, which means that changing length in the uh, brass pistons is greater than the changing length in the steel cylinders, okay? Which means that it's not possible to slide the brass pistons into the steel cylinders, okay? Since the brass pistons will expand more than the uh, steel cylinders, okay? And the answer for this one is just impossible, okay? And for the next question, well, in order to let the pistons operate under 150 degrees Celsius. Um, the final diameter of the pistons must match with the uh, final diameter of the cylinders, okay? So this is the limit here. Okay? So with this limit, we can determine the minimum dia uh, diameter for the uh, cylinders. So D1 here is the final diameter for the pistons, and D2 here is the final diameter for the uh, cylinders. So we know the final diameter can be equal to initial diameter plus the changing diameter. So for the piston, we have D01 plus delta D1, okay? And for the uh, steel, we have D02 plus delta T, the D2. So when the delta D1, which is the uh, changing diameter in the brass pistons, is equal to alpha 1 times D01 times delta T. And delta D2 is the changing diameter in the uh, steel cylinders, which is equal to alpha 2 times D02 times delta T. And the changing temperature is the same, which is between 20 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius. Okay? So if we uh, use the alpha 1, times D01 delta T and the alpha 2 times D02 delta T substitute for delta D1 and delta D2, we'll have D01 plus alpha 1 times D01 times delta T is equal to D02 plus alpha 2 times D02 times delta T, which will have D01 times, oh, D01 times uh, 1 plus alpha 1 times delta T is equal to D02 times 1 plus alpha 2 times uh, delta T. So therefore, we have D02, which is the initial diameter of the cylinders, which is also the minimum diameter we're looking for to determine this question, is equal to D01 times 1 plus alpha 1 times delta T over 1 plus alpha 2 times delta T. So well, we know that uh, the initial diameter for the brass pistons is given as 25.000 centimeter, and the linear, uh, I'm sorry, the coefficient of linear expansion for the uh, Brass pistons is uh, 2.0 times 10 to the power negative 5 per degree Celsius. And uh, we know the changing temperature is uh, between 20 degrees Celsius and uh, 150 degrees Celsius, which is uh, 130 degrees Celsius, which can be also equal to 130 Kelvin. Okay. And alpha 2 is the coefficient of linear expansion for the uh, steel, which is 1.2 times 10 to the power negative 5 per degree Celsius. So if we plug in back to the equation, we have D02, which is the minimum diameter of the cylinders, is equal to um, 25. 
0.000 centimeter times 1 plus 2.0 times 10 to the power of negative 5 per degree Celsius and then times the changing temperature which is 130 degrees Celsius and then over 1 plus um, uh, 1.2 times 10 to the power of negative 5 per degree Celsius and then times the changing temperature which is 130 degrees Celsius and this will give us the minimum diameter for the uh, steel cylinders is about 25.026 centimeter and this is the answer for this question